Hello, today we're going to be talking about Managing Oneself by Peter Drucker. This is a little book, it only takes about 45 minutes to read, but what you'll notice about this book is that it has a lot of the core concepts that have been kind of extrapolated by a lot of other writers because Peter Drucker was essentially one of the first people in the business and self-improvement uh, areas as far as writing books goes. And this book also is really interesting because it it's not written as a how-to guide. It's more of a questioning about yourself type of a book, which I think is really refreshing as today it seems like a lot of people are prescribing you to do specific things. And this one is great because it shows you how to find the things that you should do for yourself. So let's jump into it. First off, we're going to talk about managing oneself. Throughout history, the majority of people were not responsible for managing themselves. They were usually told what to do, right? If you were a blacksmith, you were going to be a blacksmith. Or if you were going to be um, someone who works with horses, you're going to be someone who works with horses. You didn't have to decide that for yourself, and you didn't have to decide what you were going to do on a day-to-day -day basis. But now most of us need to learn to manage ourselves. We need to decide where we can make our biggest contribution, and then we also need to figure out how to stay mentally alert so that we can create the biggest contribution uh, that we can. So this means knowing when and how to work. And that really goes into a lot of these questions that we're gonna go through here. So the very first one that you wanna look at is what are your strengths? Most people think they know what they're good at, usually they're wrong, and more often people know what they're not good at, but even then more people are wrong than right. So what Peter's basically saying here is that you might think that you're really good at something, but if you took a big overarching view of your life, you might not necessarily really be good at that thing. And even if you think that you're really bad at something because you've had bad experiences in the past, that might not necessarily be the truth. You might be good at that specific thing. And the way that he says that we should go about looking into this is through feedback analysis. So this is the only true way to find your strengths. And basically it's a framework that goes something like this. You make a key decision or you take a key action. And then when you do that, you write down what you expect will happen. And then nine to 12 months later, you compare your results to the expectation. And then after that, you repeat that for two to three years and you learn where your strengths and weaknesses are. And this is something really interesting because I think this right here showcases such a big difference from the old way of doing things and the new way of doing things. I think that a lot of books completely skip this process and they'll tell you how you should be doing things and assuming, they're assuming what your strengths are. But you can see two or three years feels like a long time to most people nowadays, but two or three years really is a short amount of time to be able to discover such meaningful questions about yourself and about the way that you work and about what your strengths are. So after you do those two or three years, you take action by playing to what your strengths are and working towards your weaknesses. So you can see where your strengths and weaknesses are because if you choose something and you decide, hey, I'm gonna do this, um, let's say for example, you are going to pick something that's very regimented and something that uh, you need to complete every single day and go along a very specific plan and it doesn't work out so well, well maybe you are more of a creative thinker and maybe some of the projects that you've done where you were able to be more creative during that time, that went swimmingly, whereas something where you were more structured and you had to play by the rules sort of thing, maybe you aren't necessarily someone that can do that. Maybe you're more creative and you really have to have these things written down to be able to look back at them um, in order to be able to find what your strengths and weaknesses are. And then the last part is that you want to look for where your arrogance is causing you harm and work to overcome it. So this would be something where um, you're really, really creative and you're really good at something and you think maybe, oh, I'm really bad at talking to people, I'm really bad at networking, or I'm really bad at selling. You might want to look a little bit deeper into that because your uh, arrogance or you know, your miss, um, y you're thinking, oh, I'm really bad at this one thing and you're arrogant and thinking, oh, I can't get better at that thing. Um, that might be causing you some harm and you might want to look into that. Can I get better? Can I improve my strengths at selling and at networking in order to really further my true strength, which is my creativity or my, or my art? And that's working on your strengths. You want to play to your already strengths and then know what your weaknesses are so that you can work on them. So it's important to figure out what your strengths are. The next one is how do you perform? So after you know your strengths, you want to know 
most people don't know how they get things done. So they tend to work in ways that are not the best for them. That's what I was talking about between regimented and, um, and more free flowing. So like your strengths, the way that you perform is unique and based on your personality. So you'll see people who have strengths in a certain area generally perform the same way or you'll see people who have strengths in a different area generally perform all the same way because this is all slightly based on personality. So there's a few different questions here that Peter says that you should go over to learn how you perform. First, are you a reader or a listener? Most people are either one or the other, and what you want to do is look at your past experiences in order to figure it out. Were you better in class when you were reading out of the textbook, or were you better in class when you were listening to the teacher and maybe taking notes? Or were you one of those lucky people that could listen to something and remember it without even having to take notes? Those things are all very important to know. So the next, most people cannot change from one to the other. So if you were one thing your whole entire life and then you try and force yourself to change into the next thing, you're going to be spending a lot more mental energy than you need to spend. So it's important to play to your strengths. The next one is how do you learn? Most schools, training, and courses are all organized around one specific way of learning. Now, this is changing a little bit with inter the internet. Uh, there's a lot of different ways that you can learn, but it still is generally all kind of structured in the same exact way uh, as far as teaching goes, just because it's the ease for the teacher rather than the benefit of the students. So there are probably a half dozen ways or so to learn. Uh, one is to learn by doing. That's the one that I resonate with the most. And it's the hardest one to be nowadays. I think that there's a lot of people out there that are like this, but it's the hardest one to be nowadays because there's so much information out there. We feel like the more information that we take in, the better. But really, it's we have to act on that information in order to learn it. The next one is to hearing yourself talk, teaching, writing, and there's a bunch of other ones that you could potentially be as far as learning styles as well. And again, you'll want to go back and look at how did I perform in the past? And that's the way that you'll best learn about yourself now. So other performance questions that you might want to ask are, do you work best as a team or do you work best alone? Are you a decision maker or an advisor? And do you perform well under stress? And I want to underscore here that when we are going back and looking at all of these questions, we want to look based on actual outcome. And that's why Peter talks about writing those things down. You want to look on actual outcome and you don't want to look on how you perceive it because uh, if you've read, read many other different personal development and self-help books, you start to realize that how we see the world is not always how the world actually is. So the next part is what are my values? So what kind of person do you want to see in the mirror in the morning? It's a great question to ask yourself. When you're waking up first thing in the morning, can you live with the type of person that you've become? And that's really important. Or do you see yourself as a different person than you actually are in the mirror? Another great question to ponder on. So what is the most important thing to you? That's another great question to kind of ponder on. That, that speaks again to your values. What's most important to you? Do, you? do you value money over most things because you know the opportunity that the money can provide you? Or do you value giving to other people as your number one value because you like to actually see the value that you can give to other people. And this is demonstrated in one analogy that Peter said during the book that I thought was interesting. It's fast growth versus slow growth. Um, people will think, as far as business goes, that one is economically better than the other. But really, there's no way to tell which one is going to be right for your company. And the, real, the only way that you can decide which one you should go after, whether you're trying to grow very fast or you're trying to grow long and slow, um, you want to make sure that you know which type of that person you are. So neither is better or worse economically, but there are people who are suited for one or the other. So that's what are my values. The next part is where do I belong? So very few people choose their careers early in their life. Most people don't really know where they belong until after their mid-20s. That's something that no one is really talking about, but the the majority of your early career, the majority of your early life is really just about getting to know who you are. And that should kind of be your number one goal if you're someone out there that's in their 20s. Number one goal is to figure out who you are and move more towards playing to your strengths. So by that time, you should be able to answer the previous questions, right? All those questions that we just went through, what are my strengths, how do I perform, and what are my values? 
So successful careers are not planned, they develop. When people are prepared for the opportunities because they know their strengths, their method of work, and their values. Very interesting. Uh, you'll hear a lot of people say it's all about the people that you know, and it's, you know, it's all about being in the right place at the right time. And those things I think are definitely true, but knowing your strengths and going after the things that you are strong at and how you perform well and what your values are, that is also very, very important. So the next question is what should I contribute? And the way that you figure this out is that you answer these three questions. What does the situation require? So whatever job you're in, if you're in a business, what does it require to get done or to get done at a high level? And then given your strengths and way of performance values, and you ask yourself, how can you make the greatest contribution given those things? And then what result, what results have to be achieved to make a difference? And that's interesting as well. You don't want to just go and make the result that is expected of you, but you want to see, okay, what results are needed to actually make a difference? And that's especially important if you're in business, but also in corporate as well. So the next thing is that plans can usually cover no more than 18 months. Think about your goals within that time frame. Where and how can you achieve a result that will make a difference in the next year and a half? And the reason we're talking year and a half is because the landscape could change in whatever area you're in in your life, whether you're talking about relationships, you're talking about health and fitness, whether you're talking about business, the landscape could change astronomically in 18 months. So setting a goal past 18 months is not necessarily a goal that's more like a vision. So where and how can you achieve a result that will make a difference in the next year and a half? You want to try and make sure that it's a stretch goal so it's going to be just out of your reach or it's going to force you to be your highest self in order to achieve it. You want to make sure that the results that you're aiming for are meaningful and then you want to make sure that the results are meaningful and measurable. Um, I believe that is actually uh, measurable is the word, real word that we're looking for there. You don't want to set a goal that is uh, totally ambiguous. You want to set a goal of a very specific thing that you want to get done. So the next part we're going into is less about questions that you should ask yourself, right? These are the five questions right here that you should really know about yourself. And then we're going to talk about how to use those questions in the world to get what you want out of life. So the first thing that you need to think about is that other people are individuals. They have strengths. They have ways of getting things done. They have values. They have places that they feel like they belong. They want to know what they should contribute. Those are all things that other people are going to need to know about themselves. But the burden isn't necessarily on them to know that stuff, but on you to figure it out. That's why you need to have responsibility for your relationships. So other people need to know about you as well. And this is something very interesting. It, it can feel presumptuous to tell someone, these are my strengths. This is how I work best. This is what my value is. But if you tell a uh, superior or you tell someone that is working with you what your strengths how you work best in your values they're going to know how to best motivate you they're going to know how to best give you a project that you will work well on and those are all going to be super valuable things for potential employers bosses and even people who are working with you underneath you to know how you work very very important and you have to be open and honest with those people about the things that you've learned about yourself over the years so and that's talking about you must take responsibility for these for communicating these things with other people. They'll be thankful that you tell them, and they'll be thankful. Um, they'll be more likely to play to your strengths. They'll be more likely to give you the projects that will work for you. So the second half of your life. This right here encompasses the majority of how you're going to get the most out of this book in the short term. And then... Peter saw it fit to talk a little bit about midlife crises and boredom in the workplace. This must have been happening quite a bit around the time that he was maybe writing this book. So after 20 years of working at the same job, people aren't stimulated or growing any longer. And that can happen to almost any of us. Um, for some of us, it happens even quicker than 20 years. And the secret to curing this is having a second career. You can move from one organization to another 
You can develop a parallel career where you're working both at the same time. Maybe you're working on a, a side business or anything like that. And then he also suggests maybe starting a business in coaching and consulting. If you have gone through a lot of these things and you've performed at a high level on the past 20 years, there's a lot of businesses out there that would be more than happy to pay you a good wage to be a coach or a consultant based on your strengths. So that was all of Managing Oneself by Peter Drucker. Very interesting book. Peter's written a lot of other books, and I'll probably do some book reviews on those as well. I'd really suggest you go through and ask yourself some of these questions and maybe even set some 18 months goals and then look back after 18 months and decide whether your strengths are what you thought they were or whether your weaknesses are what they thought or are what you thought they were. Thanks for watching the video. We'll see you next time.